Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Magnolia. This film came out in 1999. It was written and directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. He had just come off major critical and commercial success with Boogie Nights in 1997, and because of that film, he was given a lot of freedom to make his next project, Magnolia. An unusual amount of freedom where he was able to edit everything, able to have final say, and for somebody, you know, especially somebody in their 20s, a, a young creative person, that's that's a dream. So this film, I guess you could say, is a result of PTA being untamed at this point in his life. It is a very ambitious film and it's pieced together in a very unique way, almost almost in a psychedelic way, where you have all of these uh, different moving pieces, different characters and storylines. Some of them intersect, some of them do not. But they all move together quite musically, almost as though it's a, a symphony in a lot of ways. and. Or, or like one nucleus where it's constantly fluctuating here or there in a very rhythmic sort of fashion. And he's doing that to sort of purposely subvert our expectations when it comes to serendipity and of course miraculous things happening. He's going for a film where all of the stories converge thematically and a lot of the climaxes are very similar uh, regardless of circumstance and uh, they're built on themes that Anderson has used many times in his films, particularly themes of, of fathers and sons and uh, guilt from the past and how it can carry into the present. Naturally there's a lot going on here and this film is very similar to the way Boogie Nights was shot in that it's it's very kinetic, it's very it's relying heavily on the editing, the movement, the controlled dolly shots, a lot of long single takes and all of this is meant to draw us into the tension. It does feel montagey as though it is a Scorsese gangster film. Also it's a large ensemble of characters so each one is sort of embodying different fragments of the overall themes. I did review Boogie Nights a long time ago, I don't even remember when, but yeah, some time in the past, and I remember talking about how I was really drawn to how beautiful it was aesthetically and how it was just structured to a T in terms of the camera work and the editing and all of that. But ultimately it does feel a bit like an exercise in aesthetic to evoke feeling rather than exploring the ideas in a way that I felt that PTA was definitely capable of even then. It is compelling, but it does fizzle out on multiple viewings, for me at least. And I think Magnolia is wanting to be a sort of extension of that, almost a meditative response to Boogie Nights where he's becoming more conscious of that narrative narrative style and its meaning. He's talking about chance and reality versus how it can be used metaphorically in art, and he is, like I said, trying to subvert our expectations almost to make a, a point about that. For me, this film is certainly well made, and it is made with heart, so that's, that's something I think that's important to note, but I do think the overall effect of it is ultimately very messy and there are too many loose ends, a lack of structural cohesion. I know what it's trying to do is trying to deconstruct a certain type of filmmaking in a certain sense and, you know, as I said, subverting those narrative expectations, but I think through doing so it never quite finds the ease to be able to uh, flesh out those ideas. The overall effect of it is a little half-baked, and I would say more so than Boogie Nights, which I think I, I prefer to this one. I think he's just overreaching here, and you know, he was very young, and so maybe a little bit more impulsive, and I think that he developed a lot more restraint and perspective later on in his career, especially when he made There Will Be Blood, which I think is his crowning achievement. For that film, I think he really found the, the confidence and the restraint to adapt all of those thematic threads and, and hone in on them, use them focusing on a, a single protagonist. So that way he can explore them and make them very rich and well-rounded. Whereas in this film, I feel like he's kind of touching on them, but they just sort of sit there. He just wasn't on Altman's level when it came to developing large ensemble casts and creating a really a meditative tapestry. I feel like that's, that's the feeling I get when I watch an Altman film, whereas with a film like Magnolia, it feels a little bit clogged and certain parts of it work, but it doesn't, the sum of its parts don't equal a whole. And I think that PTA has since maybe admitted that he was a little bit micromanagey on this film, maybe a little brash, and you know, it's good that, good that he admitted that. The best story in this film is the one that adapts the themes the best, the themes of paternal guilt. And it involves uh, Frank Mackey, who's played by Tom Cruise, and reuniting with his dying father. For me, this is Tom Cruise's best performance he ever gave. I, I kind of struggle between that and Collateral, but I think this would definitely be the one, because for me, it utilizes all of his strengths, but is able to kind of stretch them and bend them in more interesting directions. The thing about Tom Cruise is that he is known for having, you know, a bit of polarizing behavior when it comes to his public persona, um, whether it had to do with his religious beliefs or public behavior. Uh, 
but yet he's able to be this charismatic, charismatic movie star still. He has a successful career because he's just so likable as a persona on screen. He just has this, this positive energy and an adventurous spirit, a strong physicality, and yes, all of that can be very infectious. And here he can take all of those ideas, but stretch them, play with them in different directions. As I said, this is a very physical performance and he finds a delicate balance here between farce and building that pathos. And I think you really need to be able to do that in a PTA film. And here he is utterly convincing no matter what he's doing and completely magnetic. It is the one storyline for me that has a process and a payoff that really satisfies me where the arc feels complete. And I have to mention Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, who I think is one of the great actors of his generation, one of my favorites. Uh, and he is so wonderful in this film, playing the, the sick father's nurse. Uh, always a very naturalistic performer, so very human, capturing all the subtleties in terms of this character's softness and that that genuine kindness. I honestly wish that this whole film had been about Tom Cruise and the father so that we could allow those those core uh, emotional themes to really blossom. There are other stories in this film that carry remnants of those paternal themes, whether it is the game show host and his a strange daughter who is a coke addict or the the stage dad who's pressuring his young boy to win on on said game show. I want those supporting stories to sort of create a nice wreath around the cruise story ideally, but I think for me instead they just sort of capitalize on the fumes of that story rather than really digging in to a lot of those paternal themes. There's not much there that the crew storyline doesn't already offer, so therefore a lot of the other stories just feel a little bit repetitive and, and um, yeah, just less fleshed out versions. There are elements of the, the story that involve the, the coke addict daughter um, because it is similar to the Tom Cruise storyline in a lot of ways, but yet there is a difference. It's giving us a sense of hope and we're looking to the future with this character. I think it builds nicely at first, but then it doesn't really go anywhere interesting and I'm not convinced by her relationship with the cop who is played by John C. Riley. Riley is fantastic in this role and he is another very genuine, very endearing character, similar to the Philip Seymour Hoffman character. And he is, in a sense, a bright spot in an otherwise very dark world. They really take time to build the relationship between him and the coke addict, uh, but it sort of just ends abruptly. And a lot of the motivations don't really feel earned, especially the last scene didn't particularly feel earned for me. And it is not just their story. Almost every story here ends abruptly or feels as though it just doesn't go anywhere. And I know that that's the point of the film in some ways, um, but these stories just fail to capture the essence of the themes within the characters. So I, I have trouble caring in the third act of the film. And I hadn't seen this movie in a really long time. And as I was watching it again, for this review, there were so many things that I remembered. Of course, I couldn't help but remember how amazing the editing was. I, that whole stretch in the middle, it is really well done and, and something that I remember very, very well. But I found myself realizing as the film was going on, I didn't remember anything that happened past the second act, at the end of the second act. I didn't remember what happened to any of the characters and that is really strange. But I realize it's because so many of the stories don't go anywhere. They begin in such a vivid fashion and then they just sort of fizzle. There is a murder in the film as well that doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't bother me as much as some of the other storylines because in a way, you know, it is sort of reflecting the whole some loose ends are never tied theme. But it's not really used in an effective way so it just kind of feels arbitrary. One storyline that I really don't like is the Donnie Smith storyline because I think it could have been very interesting, but it failed to materialize into anything that is meaty. Same with the Julianne Moore storyline. I really had trouble caring about her and she is maybe the most annoying trophy wife character I've seen since Susan Alexander in Citizen Kane. Not to say that those stories don't have pathos in them. They do. They are very gut-riching, high emotions and all of that. But because the essence of the characters is never really fully formed, I find it hard to resonate with it emotionally. They are, like all characters in the film, on the verge of parody, uh, but none of that feels rooted in anything. The frogs falling from the sky in theory, I think is a cool idea. And I know what it's meant to be, I think. It's meant to be a sort of biblical statement that is more or less expressing uh, the meaning of the film, but it it's not quite working for me. I'm just unconvinced by it because the rest of the film doesn't work as a whole for it to be able to be a good payoff. And it doesn't completely derail the movie or anything like that, but it just, I guess I think it 
feels a little bit like a, a cop-out. When it comes to my overall opinions on this film, it, it is tough. It is a mixed bag because I am underwhelmed and I don't particularly like the end result of it, yet there are parts of it that I do like. And I do think that the editing and that middle section that I mentioned is really hypnotic. Purely from a filmmaking perspective, I enjoy some of the film's quirks and certain characters very much are, are quite memorable, but it's too uneven for me to be sold on. But at the same time, it is very interesting to see how PTA developed as a director. And part of that, or seeing that evolution, means revisiting old works from the very beginning. Yeah, he was young and just didn't didn't have the perspective that he has now. I think now he realizes that a lot of his strengths lie in embodying a lot of those themes in much smaller storylines, more intimate portraits of American life. And we see him further develop that in his film After Magnolia, which was Punch Drunk Love, an excellent film. And then of course, like I said, he hits a peak with There Be Blood and has very interesting films afterwards, such as Phantom Thread and The Master. But with this movie, what's very important, and I want people to remember about it, is that you really see the talent here. I mean, if you had never seen a, a movie by Paul Thomas Anderson at all and you just watched this film, you know he has it. So it's worth looking into if you're a fan of his for sure. As a standalone experience, it is kind of a sophomore effort where you're watching it and you just know that this person has more capability in them. You know that they can do better. And we do see that later on, that he had true greatness in him. So I'm happy he was able to develop it in the right ways. That really makes me happy because a lot of directors do not. Um, so I think in that sense, it, it is an interesting film to watch and argue about. And that is my review. Thank you all for listening. All my social media information is below. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.